Hi everyone, let's talk about the principle of inclusion-exclusion from combinatorics. The general idea is that if we have a bunch of finite sets, A1, A2, all the way through to An, the question is what is the cardinality of A1 union, A2 union, all the way through to union An. Now if these are disjoint, pairwise or mutually disjoint, then that means that this is simply equal to the cardinality of A1 plus the cardinality of A2 all the way through to plus the cardinality of An. But the issue occurs when there are overlaps. So the overlaps consist of intersections of subcollections of these sets like AI1 intersect AI2 intersect all the way through to a i k for some integer k in between 1 and n. So we're taking intersections of subsets of this original collection of sets. And what we're going to do is alternate between subtracting and adding overlaps so that we get the cardinality of the union of all the sets. Let me give you an example. Let's say we have two sets, then this one we'll call it A and this one we'll call it B, and the intersection is A intersect B. And then it's pretty obvious that the cardinality of A union B, we start off with the cardinality of A plus the cardinality of B, but the problem is that this section in the middle is counted twice. So what we do is that we subtract it once, the A in intersection B. So that's called the principle of inclusion exclusion for two sets. Let's move on to three sets now. Let's say we have one set, two set, and three set then we're going to call this big circle here A, this big circle B, and this big circle C. This over here, this um, crescent, so this crescent here is A intersect C. This crescent here is well, it's not really a crescent, is it? The crescent is its complement, so it's it's more of a some intersection. This one is A intersect B, and this one is B intersect C, and right in the middle we have A intersect B intersect C. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets going on, and what we find is that the cardinality of A union B union C is equal to, so we start off as usual with the cardinality of A plus the cardinality of B plus the cardinality of C and then we subtract the overlaps. So we subtract A intersection B minus A intersection C minus B intersection C, those are the three non-crescents and what happens is that the center over here that is gone completely because it was counted three times by the circles it was counted three times by the the eye shaped things so when we add the circles and we subtract the eye shaped things it's gone completely so we just have to add it back in we get the cardinality of A intersection B intersection C so we can see something interesting going on. We took the one collections of sets and we added them. We took the two collections and we subtracted them. And then we took the three collections, there's just only one, and we added it. So there's a pattern that's beginning to emerge. In general, what's true is that if we have finite sets A1, 
a2 all the way through to an, and we define this square bracket of n to be the first n positive integers, so 1, 2, th all the way through to n. And we're going to, we're going to, these things in the boxes here, this box, this box, and this box, we're going to define it in general. So what we get is that for, for k is less than or equal to n and greater than or equal to 1, we're going to define sk to be the sum of the intersection of aj's where we have capital J is a subset of the first n integers such that we're choosing exactly k elements in that subset. The notation is, is a bit intense so you need to pay attention here and we're, we're taking the intersection of the little j's in the big J. So this is essentially the boxed collections of sums uh, that I had above. And just so that it's clear, over here there are n choose k subsets with k elements. And they're subsets of the section n. So then what the general pattern is, is that the union of the a k for k equals to 1 through n is equal to the alternating sum of the s k's where k ranges from 1 through n. That's the general pattern and I'm not going to prove it right here because it, it's a bit involved. Um, the argument is not too difficult but it, it, it is involved so I'm not going to do it right now. Um, but that's the general principle of inclusion exclusion and I just want to show you something called symmetric pi because it does come up quite frequently and that's when for all of the n choose k k subsets j subset of n it holds that the intersection of the little j's in j, a j, is equal to alpha k. So what I'm saying is that these things over here, these summands, they're all equal to alpha k for some, for some alpha k. For each k it's fixed. What that allows us to do is write the principle of inclusion and exclusion in a simplified manner, in this symmetric pi. What we get is that the union of the k equals to 1 through n of the ak is equal to the sum of k equals to 1 through n. And what we have is we still have an alternating, a sum with alternating signs, but since there are n choose k of them, and they're all equal to alpha k, this is the formula in the end. So that's symmetric pi. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.